Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IX. Uh, we are in Pinnacle Rocks, doing a task for Rama, one of his shades of which we find back here. The fact they didn't report Joseph's death to his daughter was indicative of their guilt for failing to protect him. In the end, heroes are also human. Three to go. Uh, so last time we escaped Alexandria with Beatrix, who defected and stayed behind to secure our escape, along with Steiner and Freya. Uh, with Joseph's help, the troop defeated the Animantoys in the Snowfield Cavern and acquired the goddess spell they needed to enter the Empire's castle. Uh, so yeah, Steiner, Freya, and Beatrix stayed behind. Oh, we got an ogre. Uh, the rest of us took the Gargant past Trino and crashed here in Pinnacle Rocks, where we met Rama the Eidolon, who is uh, tasking us with assembling pieces of a story, an ancient story. Once upon a time, 33 small countries fought together against an empire. One day, a rebel troop visited a man named Joseph who lived with his daughter. Owing a debt to the troop, he gladly accepted their plea for help. They headed for a cavern in the snowfield. We are assembling pieces of this story to prove our worth to Rama, so he will hopefully become Garnet's summon. Uh, this is the last... Oh no, this is not where we find one of his shades. This is where the actual Rama resides. We have to first jump off this cliff. Uh, we land on this lower platform where we get a chest with a mithril armlet and then down again. And Rama is right here. On their way home, they fell into a trap set by a traitor. Joseph gave his life to save the troop. The troop left without telling Joseph's daughter, Nellie, about the tragedy. That silence, that's the last piece. Oh, I wonder if we're gonna get more Sand Kings. Or if we'll find something new. Oh! Oh, shit. Uh, I think these can actually hit really hard. Uh, they should have heave and something else. I think I'll like here. Okay, that's not too bad. Especially hitting BB, who is one of the lower physical defenses on this, in this party. All right, that's not terrible. We're gonna have a roast boar. So the story that Rama is having us learn and recite. And a few of those passages make it really, really obvious. It's the story of Joseph, one of the party members from Final Fantasy II. And Rama himself goes back to Final Fantasy III. In fact, Rama has been in every single Final Fantasy game since three, with the exception of eight he was not in, and I don't believe he's in ten at all. Uh, he has kind of a cameo role in 13. He does have a triple triad card. I think that's from uh, FF14. They added a triple triad, though, of, like a couple years back. Now we'll come to the real version of Rama. And we will start piecing together this story. So first off, let's start with the beginning. The once upon a time bit. Uh, I think cooperation is next. And then we have silence, and then we can either choose hero or human. I think both of these are valid. So once upon a time, 33 small countries fought together against an empire. One day a rebel troop visited a man named Joseph who lived with his daughter. Owing debt to the troop, he gladly accepted their plea for help. They headed for a cavern in the snowfield. With Joseph's help, the troop defeated the Animantoys in the snowfield cavern and acquired the goddess spell. They needed to enter the castle. On their way home, they fell into a trap set by a traitor. Joseph gave his life to save the troop. The troop left without telling Joseph's daughter, Nellie, about the tragedy. The fact they didn't report Joseph's death to his daughter was indicative of their guilt for failing to protect him. In the end, heroes are also human. Are you satisfied with your choices? Uh, yes, we are. How come you chose human for the conclusion? People pass down stories of other people to whom they feel an affinity. The people in the story had flaws, as we all do. That's why they became heroes in the people's mind. I want to know what you think in your own words. I'm away from my country, but I haven't forgotten about my people. Hey, Rama is joining us. Great. 
and we received a Peridot, which is the jewel stone associated with Brahma. There's also Garnet herself, her namesake in the jewel she wears as a pendant. Uh, and then we also know about the emerald and a couple of other jewels that the Alexandrian uh, Empire has been after. So we now have a really much more explicit link between like precious gemstones and uh, Eidolons. You're exactly right. It's not what the people say afterward. What's important is being true to oneself. She may not have realized it, but when she wished to learn how to use summon magic, the summon power returned to her. Summon magic can be used for good or evil. She's still young, but there's room for growth. So I chose her as my master. I'll be watching over her. I hope you two will also protect her. As they sat pondering about what he would have done if she had chosen a different option to end that story. Uh, so, Lindblom Castle is off in the distance. Uh, we can jump off the cliff here and kind of make our way down the base of the mountain of Pinnacle Rocks. And we will return once again to Lindblom. And Vivi spots something in the sky above. The Red Rose Bronze Ship. The tone here is even more dour than when Clara was destroyed. Uh, one thing that- oh, actually, before I get to that. Uh, we got a sneak peek at a new Eidolon there. The Big Vor Monster. Uh, we'll see more of that one. We're gonna examine the wreckage of Lindblom and do a little bit of last minute shopping before the next part of the story kicks off. One thing I don't like about that is how it's not really set up. Uh, in fact, I guess this is Sid being an unreliable narrator. But you're led to believe that the entire reason that they go after uh, uh, Bermisha and Clara and not Lindblom first is because Lindblom is so well defended. Uh, that they have their airship fleet. And then that winds up not factoring in at all. Uh, they are rolled over immediately and without warning. 
when really they should be on high alert. And not only that, uh, the city is at least not uh, completely leveled. It's just being occupied. And of course, they might just have given up uh, and offered little resistance because they knew about uh, Odin and Clara. So instead of fighting back and risking complete destruction to uh, the power of the Eidolon, they just gave up immediately. In fact, I think that comes up in this conversation right here. Freya Steiner and Beatrix were left behind. Just kind of slight recapping there. And Sid knows about the Gargan. Of course. It's my job to know the land surrounding my country. I sometimes lack foresight. Bronn was after the Eidolons. That much I knew. But I underestimated the power of the Eidolons. Okay, yeah, that actually is a pretty good explanation. He was pretty sure before Odin came into play that they would be safe from invasion. Uh, if, like, the major force that Bronn was bringing to bear were the Black Mages. But with the Eidolons being, uh, one, in her possession, and two, much more powerful than he thought, thought it better to not even risk fighting back. Just let the Alexandrians occupy the city. The kingdom. And everybody continues to treat Vivi horribly. It's tragic. A weapons dealer named Kuja is behind this. Supplies Braun with highly advanced magical weapons. And the Black Mages are among his experiments. He appeared from the northern sky on a silver dragon. The f that he came from the north suggests he is from the outer continent. Yes, he's from the outer continent, north of the mist continent. Mmm. I just love that phrase, the outer continent. Yes, so challenging Braun now will only result in more casualties. I have no excuses for my mother's behavior, but I won't, refu but I won't uh, forgive Kuja for taking advantage of her. So this is making it sound like we are going to uh, this northern outer continent. This will be our first time. Outside of the Mist Continent, where we've been for a, for the all of Disc One, and so far about ha this is either a quarter or halfway through Disc Two. No, it's about a quarter way through Disc Two now. Okay, so the conditions for uh, Lindblom's surrender to Alexandria were the forfeiture of that new airship that Sid was working on that doesn't run on mist, so we can't fly to the Outer Continent. And the other was a jewel called the Falcon's Claw. And remember the last time we saw Braun and Beatrix on the Red Rose? They were talking about there being one more jewel or gemstone left. So the way that we're actually going to get to the Outer Continent is through a network of caves called Fossil Rue. So Limblum is officially part of Alexandrian territory now. Uh, we're being told that this is a soft point of no return, at least for a little while. Uh, so with that and the 3,000 gil that we get from Sid, they're hinting pretty strongly that Hey, you need to go and get whatever supplies you want or whatever you can 
and prepare because you won't have this luxury uh, for a while. And we could synthesize some stuff, but... Ah, oh, I want to make the Exploda, but I need another Mage Masher, so we're going to have to visit the weapon shop and do a little bit of cutting. Oh, there are active time events. I think this is the only one. The third jewel, the Falcon's Claw. Start loading the supplies. Lindlum soldiers won't obey our orders. They have complete occupation of the harbor, we learned. Uh, which is why we can't take a boat to the miscontinent. The explode is all I really wanted. Now we go back to the fountain and we speak to a man where we can see the arrival of Bronze Fleet. So th these are Lindlum soldiers. Uh, under the orders of Alexandrian soldiers loading up supplies. Aboard the Red Rose. Or aboard one of the Alexandrian ships. For some kind of long journey. And one of the soldiers points out that the entirety of the miscontinent uh, belongs to Alexandria now. They've conquered all of the other major kingdoms on this continent, so what kind of journey could they be planning? Seems like they're also getting ready to uh, expand outwards, to expand their territory to the miscontinent. We really have to go to the Outer Continent, she says after volunteering to do so. She's getting cold feet. What if something happens to you or Vivi? She's not worried about herself, she's worried about everyone else. And she calls Vivi and Zidane her elite guards. Ah, That's cute. So on the bottom level, we are going to go meet up with Vivi, and we are going to take the train out again to, uh, I guess, ground level. To the overworld. Uh, Sid has instructed Vivi to wait here before uh, he comes back to see us off. And that's because he stopped a trolley. They would have otherwise been ferrying supplies to the Alexandrian soldiers. And we get some kind of rag from him. Uh, what it actually is, is an ancient map of the entire world. A world which very much resembles the world of FF1. So we've had callbacks to FF1, FF2, and FF3 in this episode. Kind of. Kind of. Oh, and this active time event shows us uh, Sid's handiwork. Where they take so long to load supplies. Keep in mind the next mission's about to begin. The machine over there stopped and the trolley stopped coming. And they surmise that it must be Regent Sid's doing. So they already know he was involved. Seems like it, it, things might go poorly for him. But 
That's for another time. Uh, do we have a mug shop here? We do not. We do have a merchant in this guy, though. And he sells... I don't think anything that we couldn't buy from the weapon shop in Lindlum. Just in case I forgot to buy a Stardust Rod. Oh, right, there's a stock. Damn it. I didn't look at it. Oh, well. It's not that much money. And having an extra for synthesis might actually pay off. Down the line, anyway. Uh, now, before we head all the way north to this cave network, we have another stop that we have to make. We have to go back to Q's Marsh because we're leaving somebody behind. We need to find out the fate of Kina, who last we saw did not take one of the mage teleporters out of Clara before it was destroyed. Luckily, they are fine! And we can get them back into the party. Long time no see, much trouble coming back from Clara alone. They are fine, they made it. Possibly one of the only survivors of Clara. <laughs> but now Kina is back with us, safe and sound. And I think with that, do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, check out this stuff in the description, all that good stuff. Uh, thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one. Nah, nah, nah.